Bastian for the Metal Gods Meltdown. And today I am joined by... Giancarlo Vettor from the band Overhead. It's great to be chatting to you this evening. New Beginnings, I Met, is a killer album. So what's the next for the band? Are you due to be releasing any more singles or are you currently working on a new album? Yeah, well, both, sort of both. We have a, there's a leftover song from the New Beginnings Are Met sessions that um, the thing that we didn't release it when the album came out is because it's 12 minutes long. So it made no sense because New Beginnings Are Met is a long record on its own because it clocks over 50 something minutes. Wow. So, you know, releasing that song there, we're going to make the, the record too long or something. So we didn't do it. Um, so I, I'm working on that now because it's got to be uh, a bit different than the whole record was. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going to try to add uh, stuff that I haven't added in, in prior songs, like electronics and, you know, or orchestra or stuff like that. I'm gonna make it a little a little different because the songs the song itself is like a little a different experience should I uh-huh. say, you know it's not it's it's not a long song a long boring song it's got like a reason for as to why is that uh, long, but you know, and then afterwards we got uh, eleven new demos so we might start working on the new record to release it next year. Brilliant, that sounds epic. I mean. Where do you draw your inspirations from? I mean, ben- Venezuela has uh, political tensions over there, doesn't it? So do you draw a lot of your ideas from what's going on in your home country? Well, uh, most of it, when it comes to writing the songs that have social content, it definitely helps being from yeah. where I am. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, when I was younger, it was different because in order to write songs, you just did it because you, were, you wanted to write the most aggressive, the most killer, the most whatever. Yeah, you know, but right now sometimes really experiences. I don't know. It's like trying to translate those experiences on your music or something. Yeah. It goes by that. That's the way I write now. Cool. But yeah, being from Venezuela is kind of you know this music is just a way to channel that. If one of the songs from the album, your last album, could appear on a film or a TV series, which one would you choose? Okay, um, which one would I choose? As of nowadays, I think that Realities Collide would be the song for that. <laughs> I mean, because <clears throat> Realities Collide, I wrote it. And um, when it was time to add the lyrics to that, you know, we were all like, OK, there was this moment when the, you had a lot of protests in South America, you know. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in South America as a whole, because they were happening in simultaneously in Argentina, Chile, Venezuela, everywhere. And it was like, OK. <laughs> What the hell? So that's why Realities <laughs> Collide speaks about um, people that it's unconformist with something. Uh-huh. But, you know, others may also want to help. But just because the realities are different, they collide. And yeah, <laughs> that's how it goes. So that's that's the concept, of, the concept of that song. And I really think that right now it still fits because, you know. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Uh, we should come and live in Europe and see what it's like over here. It's mad. Um, <laughs> Well, I'll be there in November. So, oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. The album cover would make a really cool tattoo, don't you think? Do you have that as a tattoo? Not not at the moment, but yeah, I did think about it when uh, the the artist who made it is Jan Sek. He's from, if I'm not mistaken, he's from Indonesia. We started talking and he asked me what the record was about. And I just told him, man, I think the record is vile enough. Could you do, you know, could you just draw something vile? Yeah. He came up with that and I was like, okay, oh my God. (laughs) But the thing is that people here in, in in the local metal scene are like a bunch of haters. And then they started saying that that record, the cover was like a PlayStation game cover. (laughs) <laughs> oh, well. okay there you go so my third record is a playstation game there you have it <laughs> oh, well, you can't please everyone man you can't please everyone um yeah you so can what do you, do, what do you do play live do you ever do live feeds or is that something you'd consider three we did three streamings when the pandemic was on did you and right. uh the, as for over hates line, last lineup those are like the three the three times that we did play live right <laughs> but it's good because uh we do have live recordings just by doing that but i yeah. 
I don't know. I really, I really want to, you know, get to the stage, to the stages again. We're working for a, for a full Europe tour, and we're working right. with KS Music. The thing is that it hasn't been possible as of now, so. <laughs> It's going to be a bit difficult, I think, because like all the bands are out on tour at the moment, and the cost of living and everything is just money, isn't it? It's just this. It's like it's not well, easy. money. Like, money's all. Money's got to be there always, you know. Yeah, because man. how do you get there and how do you feed yourself? Where do you sleep? All that exactly. costs money. So yeah, exactly. yeah. So have you guys ever played in Europe before? No, um, we played uh, India. Uh, once and then played um, Canada and played uh, Ecuador and Colombia, which are uh, two countries on our side of the planet. Yeah, and uh, and well, the whole of Venezuela we have so yeah several yeah. times done it. So brilliant. So what was India like? That must have been interesting. Yeah, I mean it's uh, well, India is India, as I always say, is that they're they're different. Yeah. But certainly there were there, you know, you see there there's metal heads there and they do enjoy the aggressive music. So absolutely. Yeah. When we played New Delhi, though, it was uh, it, it was notorious that because we played with like five or six metal bands from India that day. And those guys were mostly into metal core, I guess. Right. You know, all of, all of those bands sounded more like uh, Bullet for My Valentine or Five <laughs> Finger or, or Five Finger Death Punch or. Yeah. All of that, instead, uh, Overhead sounds more uh, sort of uh, closest to old school band. Absolutely. Yeah, I can agree, Matt, more, mate. Um, so talking yeah. about touring, who, who would be your ultimate three bands to go on tour with? Mm, wow. Uh, well, Creator's my favorite band. Yeah. <laughs> But, yeah. but I would say Creator, Merciful Fate, King Diamond, and uh, well, Merciful Fate and King Diamond, two different bands, but it's the same artist, just because yeah. <laughs> he is a hell of an influence on everyone. But, you know, and maybe, you know, maybe Testament. I mean, I saw Testament here in Venezuela three times, and I love that band. Fucking so, yeah. Fantastic, aren't they? <clears throat> yeah, they're absolutely fantastic live, man. Absolutely. Um, they, they have to be. I mean, they have to be those bands because those are the ones that I grew up listening to. I mean, Sepultura would make for another uh -huh. amazing experience, but, you know, uh, yeah. that band is so different now that the Sepultura I knew, but it still kicks ass. Full Absolutely. throttle. Can you tell us what's been your best experience playing live? Wow. But there's, a, there's a few, but um, I'd say that here in Venezuela, there was the... Uh, when we did the party to release in the second record, uh, yeah. Relentless is our strength. We played at a theater, and that theater is located, and uh, it's like a building that belongs to a bank. So it's right. that was pretty cultural and uh -huh. and exclusive and stuff. And we get to do the 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 showcase of the record in that place. So we showcased the video for No Change Today when it came out and the record, uh -huh. and it was one of the most special nights that we had because yeah. We did, uh, we brought the same thing you see on that video. It's like the full production, you know, the <laughs> yeah, big, yeah. big drums and the wall of amplifiers and all that. I think yeah. that was something. Um, Ecuador, we played at a festival. It was a, a front of a, really a lot of people, like 10,000. It was the first time that I did like that. Wow. And it was great. Cool. But here in Venezuela, it's just a bunch that come out besides that showcase because when we were touring for relentless or strength we played a lot of shows mm -hmm. and uh we played one in in a in a city called valera here's a western city in venezuela it's a small town uh -huh. and it had the most aggressive circle pit i've ever seen <laughs> <You know? laughs> Brilliant. so the promoter started yelling man they cut the music cut it now they're really? gonna thrash this place <laughs> <We're> <laughs> like, okay that's the music we play. Come on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly, man. Exactly. Um, <laughs> that, was, that was good. It really stood out. I mean, it really yeah. stood out because it was it was something. We were like, we didn't think that it was going to be this bad. You know? Yeah. I think like one of the most ridiculous gigs I've ever been to was seen Onslaught. You know Onslaught, yeah? In no. Newcastle. And it's like a fresh band. And they were stopping people, yeah. body slamming and everything. It's like, well, what's the point of even being here? It was shit. Can you guys tell us what's been your worst experience then on stage? 
we, there was this show, um, you know that Venezuela's got an island called Margarita, which is to the east side of the northeastern side. Right. We went to the aisle to play, and the show took place at a, it, it was called Nuevo Mundo Bar or something, and it was like, if when you made it there, it was like an empty field. <laughs> we were like, so it, it had a little stage and all that. And when we went to the stage, I said, man, it feels like everything here is going to explode in the next second. And we started playing. Yeah. And it felt you it felt like if you were like getting electrocuted or something. Uh-huh. <laughs> so we we played like three songs and man, we had to cut it. What the hell? Yeah. We can't keep at it. No, then no. the power went down, so we had to wait until they restore it to keep on playing. It was like, nah, man. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> it sucks, but that yeah. that was it was bad because of that, but if you saw the concert, you would like it because it was about 400 people in there and the show did rock. Uh-huh. But, wow. but, you know, when, when it was starting out, it wasn't that good. But, you know, That's not good. <laughs> I had to sing, I had to sing like, you know, a, a hand uh, before the mic because it, I mean, it just didn't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what would you say has been your band's biggest accomplishment so far? Well, we won uh, a couple of awards here, luckily. That's good, because it right. means something, because there's people that really want to appreciate the things that you're doing. So I guess that, that was great. And uh, in that same year, we yeah, I guess that 2011 was very good, because we won those two awards. We toured Ecuador and India that same year and played the whole of the, of the country. So the band was like kind of uh, making enough for itself to survive. Yeah. You know, we didn't, we weren't able to make a living out of it, but the band could survive. You could, uh, you know, pay for rehearsal space and yeah. whatever the hell you were going to do, produce new music, new videos, whatever, with the money you made out of the band. And I think that was great. We were going up to something, but unfortunately yeah. here, uh, it had whatever happened because of the government we have and stuff. And, you know, people just... Uh, they needed to go out of the country and the band kind of yeah. fell apart in that time. So right. it was like, yeah, 2011 was a very successful year. And I'd say that 2012 was as good as 2011. But then from 2013 onwards, it wasn't that good right. because of it. And in, and in 2015, all of the guys went out and I stayed. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. So does uh, Venezuela have a good metal scene then? Yeah, I would say so. I do, I do like it. It's small, but I do like right. it. That's yeah. brilliant. If you could make up a super group of musicians, including yourself, who would be in your band? Oh wow! Well, here, uh, well, I don't. You may not know uh, the scene that we have here, but uh, fortunately enough, uh, I I have a band with a, a certain group of musicians that I would have handpicked. All but right. let's say that out of the out of my favorite bands, I would be fronting the band, having Buck from Decapitated playing guitar. Cool. Uh, and you know who would be the bassist for that band? Now that's complicated <laughs> <laughs> because if it would be, I mean, I've always loved Cliff Burton, but he's not alive anymore. So uh, maybe we get Steve DiGiorgio to play the bass. Cool. Who's a hell of a bassist? Yeah, and and Igor Cavalera to play the drums. That'd be a, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, how about that? That'd be a fucking fantastic, <laughs> fantastic lineup, man. So, what song do you think has the heaviest riff of all time? <laughs> wow, out of a, I don't know, I don't know because I mean, heaviness isn't something that not all of us translate the same. Yeah, it's true. But but there are, I mean. There are songs that I consider very heavy, and I was like, this morning I was listening to uh, the Slipknot record called uh, Iowa. Okay, yeah, yeah. Their second album, whatever that is in that album, is the heaviest thing in the world. I mean, <laughs> Slipknot is quite heavy when it comes to that. Absolutely, you know? cool. So, well, I sort of answered this question. And what was the last song you listened to today? The last song I listened to today. Yeah. Huh? I guess it was Iconoclast by Decapitated. <laughs> Excellent. I was yeah. like, uh, I, we were watching a concert that they did in Grass Pop uh-huh. and, and the 2022 concert. And I wanted to see because uh, Rob from Machine had recorded vocals there. And I wanted right. to see if they 
but you know they do it with backup tracks but it's good it's good enough man so those guys are excellent to, i haven't seen them live but i just do want to do it yeah grass i love that band that's a fantastic yeah. festival as well man if you can get on this, onto that sometime that'd be good it's brilliant yeah absolutely brilliant. well we'll see next year what happens i mean yeah. definitely it, we all you know want to go to europe to be able yes. to attend to walken or you know uh, i love the metal scene i love the metal scene in europe mainland europe compared yeah. to the uk honestly it's fucking brilliant the beer is cheap the beer is beautiful food's amazing we're walking yeah. up oh, it's awesome okay so can you tell us why we should check out over hate because if you do like heavy music with melody you definitely would dig our band. No, hands down. Brilliant. Um, can you give us four words to describe Over Hate? Four words <laughs> to describe my band. You know, beautiful, aggressive, melodic, and uh, dense. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, I want to thank you for your time today. Do you have any Thank final you, sir, words? for having me. No worries, man. <laughs> Do you have any final words for your fans, our viewers, and listeners? Well, I support the band, and I really hope if we do get to Europe, to get to see you all.